Hey guys, what's up? Premier here, and I'm back in Tree Burn Tree for the Juicy Incursion League. Welcome to the Flickering Arc. This build is a mid budget, mid performance Dead Eye build, and it's fun to play, extremely flashy, and capable of taking you to T14 maps without min maxing. You know what I said, T14 and not 15, I'll explain later. Here's some gameplay. The action consists of you shield charging at pretty great speeds in the packs, lightning arcs far from your Milner, clearing out the pack. For beefier mobs or rares and bosses, you will enter a batshit omni slash mode, beat them down with divine fire and lightning bolts. Now, this is going to be a great experiment for those who have never built a Fugger Strike character or are intimidated by how to min max those physical conversion, Terminus, S, Tor, Oros, Sacrifice builds. The guide is going to be short, as it isn't super capable, honestly, or even Guardian capable. Here are the sections. Uh, skip ahead to gear if you have to, because we're doing mechanics first. First up, Mjolnir. When you hit anything with this weapon, including hits from skills, it will fire off a socketed lightning spell. In this build, we use the newly buffed arc, just like everyone else, for a great clearing auto-target ability that has half-decent single-target damage. Do note, this lightning spell can only happen once every 0.25 seconds. So if I hit uh, 8 times a second, it's only going to go off 4 times. Take note. So the first hit when you shoot charge into packs, it zaps the group, and that will be enough for clearing yellow maps where the mob HP is low enough. Now when there are tankier rares on map bosses, or you know, on late raid maps, you can continue shield charging them to get the prop off, but that's not cool at all. So we're going to use PoE's number 1 epilepsy inducing attack, Flick a strike, which basically teleports you to a target and smacks it upside the head. Similarly, Monia is going to bolt an arc into whoever it hits each time, up to 4 times a second. Now, Flick a strike can't be spammed usually. There is actually a 2 second cooldown, you will have to wait until you do your next Flick a strike, unless you spam a frenzy charge. Now, how are we going to create infinite frenzy charges? Uh, this is made possible with the new unique boots from about 3 weeks ago, called the Red Trail. Now the Red Trail gives you a frenzy charge if you hit something while you, yourself, are bleeding. In fact, it also makes you move faster if you're bleeding, which is nice. Now how are you going to get yourself to bleed? Um, you can either rely on the unique's property, which allows enemies 50% chance to get you to bleed, but there's a better workaround that pulls it all together this unique jewel, the Golden Rule. So the Golden Rule simply means if you make something bleed, you're gonna bleed as well. Now all you have to do is to make sure you consistently make things bleed and you will be bleeding all the time. And so any attack you do is going to return you frenzy charges, one per hit. And this allows you to flick a strike indefinitely and discharge lightning as much as possible through your Mjolnir. So you spend one frenzy charge, you hit a target, it gives you back one frenzy charge, and that bypasses cooldown on flicker strike, allowing you to flicker strike again. And each time you flicker strike, it releases a lightning bolt. That's all there is to it. And now on to why we pick Did I. Now there are a few variants of Mjolnir arc out there, uh, most notably Inquisitors and Elementalists, which work really great and have much higher damage potential than the Did I, honestly. However, the Dead Eye has some crazy good synergies with Flicker in particular. Uh, what it lacks, up, lacks in raw damage, it makes up for in speed. Those other builds tend to use Cyclone, which, which has its merits, you know, but ultimately uh, it looks kind of boring, and that's not what you're here for. You're here for Flicker, which is cool, right? So let's look at the Ascendancy points first. First up, Rupture. The first line reads, you have a 25% chance for attacks to bleed. And you pair this with a chance to bleed gem, that brings it up to 50%, which makes it very reliable in most situations. Now the second and third lines gives you a huge damage boost to anything that's bleeding, and uh, it actually makes up for a lot of lost ground on Dead Eye. It gives you critical strike chance for both spells and attacks, and increases the multiplier for both spells and attacks, but although you don't want to scale attacks too much because the bleed's going to hurt you. The third, oh, the fourth line, it's very important as well. It reduces bleeding damage taken when you move. Because as you know, when you move when you're bleeding, you take double the damage. This nullifies that and allows you to continue shield charging around, finding the next pack. 
And that last line right there is better than what most people might think. Look at the wording. It gains 30 life when you hit a bleeding enemy. It doesn't say when you hit a bleeding enemy with attacks or, or when you attack a bleeding enemy. This means all hits, including spells, uh, which means your arc's going to hit it. Every single arc and every chain in the arc that hits is going to hit, uh, give you 30 life back. And things like if you have cast with damage taken, blade vortex or firestorm, every single one of those blades and fireballs in the firestorm is going to give you 30 life back. And that actually helps a lot with survivability. We're going to pair this with a watcher's eye later with vitality to give you 60 life back whenever you hit something. And it's going to top you up a lot in fights along with leech. Next, gathering winds. Now, this is uh, more formally referred to as Tailwind. Most people just call it Tailwind without saying Gathering Winds. You can ignore the first line because we are not an invasion build. Um, it's, look at the second line. That's, that's the one. If you have used a skill recently, you and your nearby allies have Tailwind. It doesn't say what... Oh, it does. Tailwind makes you 10% faster. Okay, right here. And 10% it's, it's a more multiplier, meaning that if I attack 10 times a second before this, I'm going to attack 11 times instead. It's a 1.1 times multiplier. And the second line basically means the more skills you use within the last 4 seconds, you can bring up that bonus to 1.2. Now this is going to be the thing that makes Did I speed out a hit. First of all, you don't have to stack so much attack speed on the tree, or on jewels, or on jewelry. Uh, you just go with, in fact, uh, just faster attack gem. It's going to provide you with everything, along with the horror gloves. And it actually makes you shield charge really fast because shield charge scales with both attack and movement speed. And this uh, keystone, well, this ascendancy point actually scales both of those. Now it gets a bit downhill from here because Zedai is supposed to be a, you know, like a bow and arrow class. But this third one, fast and deadly, is important as well. Uh, it gives you attack speed, which is always welcome. Uh, projectile damage, we don't benefit from that at all in this build because we don't fire projectiles, sadly. But that third line right there, accuracy rating is doubled. That is huge. It basically means uh, paired together with, let's see, this jewel here, Transcendent Mind, which uh, you should put in this spot. That gives you 800 accuracy rating. That is two tier one rolls on rings. And with just this jewel and the ascendancy combined, I have a 92% chance to hit, which is really great considering I didn't invest anything else in the accuracy. Uh, I don't have to use the lycosity, and my tree is free to take notes other than accuracy, whereas a normal attack build would have to stack that up pretty high. So this is actually very important, ignore the fourth, fourth line. The last one is a bit of a pity because uh, neither of neither far shot nor powerful position even helps at all uh, with this build. So we're going to split the points here to get a little bit more accuracy and a uh, quick chance out of it. It's, it's the what we can do. Uh, conversely, this means that the build doesn't even need to do Uber Lab, right? You can just like get into it in the 80s and 70s without even running the trials. So that's it for Zedai. It might not seem like much in terms of buffing the damage, but the speed and the bleed is what makes this build flicker worthy. That's all. Let's move on to gear. Gearing. Now this is going to be pretty straightforward, given the fact that you have to wield a Mjolnir. Look at that. 412 strength requirement, 300 int requirement. That's going to dictate what you're going to put in all those slots. If you look at what I have here, uh, my helm, two rings, my gloves, my belt, and even my amulet at some point, and my shield, are all rare items. You do not need well wrote uniques or, or rare ones to make it work. You do, however, have to prioritize strength on every single piece. Look at this 48 strength. We've got 49 strength here. Uh, you should have strength here, but I, I couldn't find one. I think this yes, here's one sitting in my inventory, right? And on the helm as well, and on the shield, I had to throw in 29 strength and chance. My belt has no resistances because I had stacked strength. Right, it's uh, 78 right there. It gives me, wow, uh, 130 life, which isn't bad, right? And and that's pretty much it. So carrying priorities, uh, go for let's know this is a bit high end. Let's go for life on those rings. You go for max strength, close to 50 as possible. You go for as much resistance as possible because strength is a suffix. So you're going to lose one slot for 
your resistances. So you want these rings to have around 90 to 120% resistance by themselves without the last affix. And it's actually quite cheap because everyone is prioritizing high life rolls, uh, whereas strength itself gives you a decent amount of life. And it actually helps up your damage. I'll explain it later. On your gloves, uh, you kind of want the, I believe, Essence of Horror gloves that gives you attack and cast speed so that you can shoot charge way faster, right? Uh, this is going to help with your clear speed and try and get these ones in fact and it's got a bit of strength on them. Ideally, a resistance or two uh, makes a match. These shouldn't cost you more than one exalt for a really good pair. Belts, it's another area where you can prop up strength. Uh, if you manage to free up slots, you can actually get a stick-in belt. Try to go for a flask duration because uh, I'm lazy to keep refreshing my flask. And life. And move speed is always nice. You want to go fast. Boots. Mm, no debate here. You have to use the red trail. Uh, I didn't even bother quality mine. Sorry about that. And one thing to note. Um, single target is going to be helped out a lot with the lab enchant that gives you 1 to 16 lightning damage if you haven't killed recently. It's either that or the penetration boots. However, they are not on trade at the moment. Unfortunately, with this build, you're probably going to have to enchant your own. Other really nice enchants are the 2% of life and mana uh, recovered, uh, finger upon damage done, when you have killed recently, which lets you sustain a lot, even in maps where there's no mana regen or life regen. Shield. You want a critical strike chance shield with high life, you want to squeeze in a, a resistance in there, and most importantly, you want to have a spare affix on the shield, uh, sorry, suffix, because Strength doesn't roll naturally on shields, you're going to have to enchant it. You can get at most 30 here. And if you manage to find a shield that has that spare slot, it's going to help you a lot. And it's going to free up uh, more space to work with for the rest of the build. Helm, I, I, this is a really good deal, right? Uh, it's got high resist, it's got strength. And uh, for me, there's the extra line here, which is... Yeah, it's from the temple. It actually reduces the amount of physical damage you take. Uh, and combine that with... I think from the boots, which also has physical damage reduction, and my watcher's eye, which gives me further damage reduction. I actually take much less damage from physical, uh, from hits mostly. Oh no, this one applies to bleed as well. Now, necklace. Most people are going to say, wow, you said it was a cheap build. But it really is because uh, for the most part, I was using this one, which actually gave me only 1% less DPS. So look at that, it's, it's got spell damage. It's got attributes, which is great for this build. Multiplier is what shot up the difference. Uh, it has a bit of life. My life goes up by 200 here. So actually, I only included this because I was just testing out whether it helps single target. It sort of did, but a little bit. And if you can't afford it, there's three exalts right now. Go for this. It cost me 70 chaos, I believe. And by now, it should be even cheaper. Chess piece. Uh -huh. uh, you're going to say, I thought you said it was a mid-budget build. What it really is, because look at the links. You don't need the last two links right here. Power charge on critical and culling strike are quality of life uh, gems. In fact, for the most part, I was using this for link, right? And the gems you need to use are flicker. Keep it as low level as possible because you do not want to increase the damage you do physically. It's going to make you bleed even harder because you reflect it to yourself. Faster attacks, uh, you don't even have to use 2020. In fact, you should be... I'll explain it later, but attacking too often isn't too good for any trigger build because of the, the internal cooldown. Chance to bleed support, keep it at level 1. You just want it for the 25% chance cause bleeding and multi-strike support. Which basically makes your flicker go batshit. And really fast. That's all. So you have impulses, uh, which... Oh, I forgot to explain. Uh, this is important because, first of all, not only is it a 50% damage buff if you buy the right one. Uh, shock effect is nice as well. It's it's more of for clear where that last mod right there it has a chain effect. So if you kill something that is shocked, something next to it is going to explode. And uh, that's actually going to cause a chain reaction in the pack and cause packs to melt. It's the core of many lightning builds right now. Uh, that's which is why it's a little bit pricey. But because of the nature of this build where you are actually firing spells through your weapon, you don't have to 16 this. You just need to get it as fast as possible and as usable as possible. And uh, there are even variations. Once you can afford a 16, however, you can throw in stuff like cast on critical strike, 
and another arc in here so that you get in about two more arcs per second. Uh, I prefer this because, um, well, power charges are always nice to have. And Culling Strike makes increases your DPS by basically 11%. So that's it for the gear section. Uh, it's, it's really straightforward, really, because most of the rares observe the same rules. Get strength, get life, get as much resistance as possible. And if you're really rich, you can start exploring, uh, squeezing all the resistance of your rings and getting more DPS out of the amulet slot, out of the shield slot, uh, get better gloves, and a tankier helm. That's all there is for gearing. Flask. You will have to use the diamond flask, because uh, even with that much crit on the tree, I believe you are at 44, there you go, 44.99% crit chance. With a diamond flask, that's basically uh, around 70-ish crit. It's pretty nice. When you get power charges, goes higher. Your ascendancy, remember, gives you more chance to crit. On top of that, 80%. Well, it's bleeding. Uh, yeah, all the good stuff. Uh, what else? Next, uh, uh, series Promise. Uh, pre pretty much every build has this, right? You want one that gives you the maximum elemental damage and as low physical as possible, really. And you know, make sure you quality it, don't be like me. Quicksilver, of course, for moving around. Uh, the faster you move, the faster you kill. And this is a toss up between the Wise Oak and Vessel of Vinter. So, Vinter gives you Lightning Pen, which you might sorely need, but don't by added attacks, all right? Uh, never added attacks because a part of this build I'll explain later is elemental equilibrium. If you buy the added attacks, sphincters, you are going to fuck up your own damage. So stick to penetration if possible. Added spells is, is uh, it's pretty nice as well. Um, but it costs like way more. So this was the budget version. And flask, uh, I think just leave it a freezy moon because you, you don't really want a, a bleed removal flask even though it's a bit risky. But if you do that, you're going to constantly reset your stacks on yourself. Uh, and most of the time, actually, you can potion through it, right? Uh, unless it's corrupted blood, in which case, stop attacking immediately. If, if you're afraid of that, you could actually just run a uh, Storging Flask here as well for the double life restoration and an ocean button in case you get hit by corrupted blood. That's it for the Flask. Let's move on to Gem Links. And before we touch on the skill tree, buy an arc that has veil arc attached so buy veil arc which will have arc attached uh get it 20 percent. and the reason why is that even though it's in your mjolnir you can still cast veil arc outside of it and while it doesn't do that much damage by itself uh, it might clear a pack or two it, it what's important is uh if you read this buff right here Grants a buff, making you lucky when damaging enemies. What it means, basically, you get to roll the dice twice on a damage roll. And lightning is the most variable of all the elements. So that can be a huge difference. So I wanted the math. It's 25% more damage for that 4 seconds. Which is pretty big when you're trying to buzz down bosses, which is the weakness of this build. Alright, we link it to increase critical strikes. This isn't the top damage option, but uh, that's, that's if you use it in POB. Other gems give you more. But what they're forgetting is uh, you actually want to proc your impulses. So many things here. Your increased damage only comes out if you have shock enemy recently. Uh, and also, you want to shock stuff so that it, it chains explosions, right? That it, they explode because of shock. And uh, packs evaporate because, because of that. So increased critical strikes, you're going to keep it in there. Anyway, that's why you stack so much multiplier to make use of this critical strike chance. Now, the last one is not known by many. Uh, many, many will use Lightning Pet, which is a decent choice. Uh, but what actually gets you more damage is Iron Will. Because you're a, a Mjolnir build, you already have 400 odd spells. And <clears throat> the, the gem might say it only gives 46 to 47% increased spell damage. That is on top of the first line. Strength damage bonus applies to spell damage as well. And that means uh, 5 strength gives you 1% melee physical damage. Now applies to spell damage as well. And so for uh, 400 points, I believe you're looking at... Uh, I can't do math, can't do math. My god. Is it 80%? Yeah, I think so. it's around more than 80%, right? It's 84% uh, 80, more spell damage. And so overall, this thing increases your, your spell damage by almost 130%, which is more than... Uh, all the spell damage put together on your tree and your items, 
very likely we didn't invest in anything on the tree at all. Uh, there are very few increased multipliers. So it almost acts as a 100% more multiplier uh, as opposed to lightning pen, which is 37%. Now, someone's going to correct me on the math. Please do uh, prove me wrong. If, if possible, I want to know so that I can optimize my build. But I believe that was why Iron Will was chosen. And I just followed it. Right? Okay, that's for the weapon. Uh, so this is what's going to be doing the most damage. Chest, flicker strike, faster attacks, uh, multi-strike because that allows you to teleport around and uh, chain off more arcs because we didn't invest anything in attack speed, right? Uh, and chance to bleed, which makes it more reliable for you to continue your frenzy chain. 25% is fine, but uh, sometimes you might find yourself awkwardly swinging as it falls off once every in 100 scenarios. You don't want that. Uh, you can also sub chance to bleed with fortify if you are early into maps. Uh, I'll just get it on the hammer. Uh, in your gloves, these are horror gloves which allow you to shield charge faster. Uh, you will want shield charge level one, so you don't do so much damage. Fortify, likewise level one if possible, less damage to yourself. Faster attacks, and tons to bleed as well. Uh, you can do it. With you can do it with this. You can slot in an aura here or something. Uh, this is just me being lazy and wanting to flick a strike uh, without any hiccups. It really helps the smoothness of the build. Now, let's go to... Oh yeah, auras. So here we run three. Uh, vitality, Periodic Elements, and Herald of Ice. Herald of Ice helps to uh, chain the explosions damage. Uh, gives you a bit of cold damage as well to your attacks to prop elemental equilibrium, which you do have. Priority of elements is to sort of crutch you into before you start buying the really good gear. My gear is all under 40 chaos per ring, right? So, uh, in fact, some are 25. Uh, so, this helped me hit resistance caps across the board. And vitality, because that enables the watcher's eye I mentioned earlier. Where is it? Right here. It gives me life on hit while also slightly mitigating the bleed damage taken. So Vitality is my choice of Aura. Uh, when you go later, you can drop Purity of Elements once your rings fill out with Resist. Drop it for Blasphemy Wallet's Mark, which makes it safer. You can go Blasphemy Assassin's Mark if you want Power Charge Generation uh, and a Damage Boost if you're doing easy maps, for example. And, okay, next. Ah! So what happens when I face a boss? Because Flicker Strike, it's kind of kept at 4 cards per second. And it's not great for a tree link. So what I do is uh, I actually pop, as you saw, Veil Ratchet's Fire. Uh, if you read that very quickly, it's not so much the burn damage that comes out from it. It's the fact that it increases your spell damage by 37 to 39% at max level for that duration and it lasts 6 seconds. You pair that with your Veil Arc cast and uh, well, I trim Blade Vortex just for fun, why not? But um, Panic will veil outcast 25% more for 4 seconds, plus 37% more, and you get a nice boost of damage that takes down even T14 bosses. Uh, maybe you have to take a bit more after that, but that does the bulk of the work. And you look freaking cool while doing it. Next, uh, cast when damage taken. Do Actually, you don't really have to have one of these. Uh, it's cut. You can put whatever you want here, but I guess this was the most practical use. Cast when damage taken, uh, a model call. Oh, this is important. I'll get to it later. So, cast when damage taken, firestorm, so that uh, you prop EE more. Plus, every hit of the firestorm restores up to 60 life for you on the bleeding target, which heals you up really fast. Uh, Wallet's mark because I'm too lazy to find it, put it elsewhere on a ring, or, or to cast it, or to uh, have it on blasphemy. And so I put it here. So anything that hits me, uh, I can get on it, I can leech back from it. It's pretty fast. Next. Uh, what else is that? Oh, oh right. Immortal Call, Cosmic Damage Decan is really important. And that's because of the Soul of Arakali. Uh, for those of you who are new to this interaction, uh, look at the second line under Captured Arachnoxia. 50% increased recovery rate, blah, 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 if you stop taking dot damage recently. Now, are we taking dot damage all the time? Yes, we are, because we're bleeding, right? What stops bleeding damage momentarily? Like, even for 0.1 second, that's Immortal Call, because bleeding is physical damage. Immortal Call stops physical damage. If something hits me, Immortal Call goes off, 
it turns on this condition and now all my leech my life leech my uh yeah my life leech from wallet's mark and my life gain on hit goes from 60 to 90 all of a sudden it makes you so much tankier and this allows you to sort of just stay in a fight with bosses along with uh any 45 procs and combined with the damage reduction of my helm and my gem and my boots it makes you tankier than you look plus you have acrobatics and face acrobatics to help you dodge the bigger hits and allows you to heal back to full so this is the ideal pantheon for this build uh by all means go fill up the other two reduce effect of shock and shock oh wait uh you're immune to shock because uh, unaffected because of impulses so no big deal uh if you don't want to use soul of arakali you can use uh brian king though you shouldn't be getting stunned too much you have 6000 health uh, and a lot of stun recovery, which helps you get over that. But if you did, I would recommend getting filling up the hole, all three of them. Now, we've already explained the ascendancies earlier on, so we're just going to touch on how to path. I know it looks crazy, we kind of just wrap around the entire tree. Uh, that comes from being starting in the ranger area, but uh, it's, I managed to make it work. So we're going to come down here. Uh, take life notes. This is nice because you don't have stun avoidance in this tree. You tend to want to use this pantheon. So uh, bits of stun recovery as well as stun avoidance really help. There you go. So attack speed here, that's great. I tend to pick up Druidic right because uh, look at that. It gives you charges back faster, increases your flash duration. Coupled with your belt, it makes your flash last really long. Uh, giving you uptime and just fewer buttons to press. Path through here for life, right? It buffs your life recovery. Here, you can get these sockets later when you have more power, but in general, you want high life, some attack speed. Uh, you could get Onslaught here. You can also get Damage Penetration if you haven't killed before. Those, those are great ones. Okay, and uh, Multiplier. Okay, Acrobatics. Uh, this is a 5 point wonder that makes your build way tankier. Uh, it's 40% dodge, that's almost half. Right, and 30% chance to dodge spell hits. So it's for five points, it's really great. And in this version, we're not using any ES, so we don't really care. Uh, we don't care about block because we're we're not invest uh, investing into it. Now, so path up here, take life, the uh a couple of jewel notes nearby. Uh this this is part of the tree is basically going for all the multiplier as possible. We don't take so much spell damage or lightning damage because we favor crit, crit multiplier. So when you come up here, uh, here's a very juicy bunch, it's assassination, and some crit here, and juicy life note right here, gotta take this. Paths up here, you go through here uh, for a bit of strength, right? And of course, doom cast, which is huge for our spells. Staple. Come here, you can get this last, uh, gives you a multiplier lightning damage, but it isn't as good as it seems because uh, POB tells you POB thinks cast rate improves your DPS. It really doesn't because we are in a tank mode. Okay, Throat Seeker is here right, for more multiplier. Uh, jewel slot. Uh, this is important. I'll come back to it later. Uh, and then you're kind of just like trying to path here for more, more crit. Oh, this one's important. Uh, I'll just talk about the important gens right now. So, Transcendent Mind. This is a new in 3.3. It basically uh, dropped from the temple. You can upgrade it. It's, it's 5 kiosks right now. Uh, one slot alone, I'm not going to read it out, but basically if you put it in one slot here and you assign the points like this, it's going to give you 800 accuracy rating and regen some of your ES, uh, which, is, which is negligible but nice to have. ES is stun avoidance, you know. Uh, it takes away 20 intel, but who cares? We, we don't need that much intel. Or rather, we've got enough from the rest of the tree. So this is a great place to put it. Uh, if you find a better place to put it, let me know in the comments. Eh, watch his eye. Okay. This is great. First of all, running vitality. Uh, gives you counters the bleed damage somewhat and it's, it's great for proccing this gem which gives you more life on hit remember you already had I think uh, 30 from your ascendancy well right now if you have a good roll one you now have 60 life per hit and that's that's uh, with any spell and attack not, not just the attack so the spells as well and chaining they all give you 60 life back and that's huge in big packs it's going to keep you alive uh, the secondary one you can Go for don't go for rough, and I'll tell you why later. Uh, this is a good one, priority of elements, because I, I, I was being cheap, I could not afford that much resist my gear, so I actually run priority of elements, which combined with my helmet and my boots reduces a lot of physical damage taken if I'm standing still. 
which you are doing when you flicker. Okay. All oh, right, of course, the golden rule. Uh, we touched on this earlier. You gotta, gotta find a slot for it as well. Uh, this is the trifactor that keeps the build going. And then once you're done with this cluster, get life up here, and free elo resist. Come down. You might have to get strength. You notice I had to path a little bit for strength. These points come back to you once you upgrade your gear. Uh, you find more strength and better rogue items. You can put them back in the jewel nodes, which are a lot of available. And these boost your damage by a lot. So grab these. Uh, this one here, put in melt, put in melt while you have a shield, all those juicy nodes. Get them. Uh, some life in mana regen here. Uh, come down here just with a bit of life. I'm not sure if it's worth it, I'll find out later. Right, puff it down. Ah, elemental equilibrium. How important is this? Mm, it's the reason why we don't run Wrath, as you notice. People might ask you, hey, isn't Wrath going to give you 21% uh, 20, more spell damage, and etc.? Yeah, it would, but you, th this right here, EE, is one of the biggest uh, performing nodes for almost uh, a lot of builds that are on hit. Because my first hit with my weapon, right, uh, look at that. Oh, I have to activate Herald of Ice first. So I have it on my rings. There you go. The first hit of my weapon deals cold damage as well. This makes it vulnerable, uh, makes the monster vulnerable to lightning and fire damage. And it's minus 50 resist. Minus 50 resist could mean more than 50% uh, more multiplier, depending on how high the mods resist is. It is at minimum a 50% more multiplier. And it's probably higher because a lot of mobs uh, have 40 to 70% resist. So this thing here is, is it's worth much more than rough. It's one point in the tree. It happens to be on the way anyway. And it frees up 50% of a mana reservation pool for, for other... Uh, or as like vitality priority right here. You can change this to a blasphemy later in the game. Yeah, so without a doubt, I, I just dropped Wrath because you're gonna hit with your weapon, right? It, that switches it over to uh, being weak to lightning. And then lightning hits it, it becomes strong again, but that's okay because you're gonna hit it with a weapon again. And the next up that hits it is when the mob is weak. All right, that's done. So we'll come down here. We are kind of just here just to, to buy into the Scion view, uh, this being the big, most important node. Once you touch this, you can go elsewhere and fill up the wheel later. Uh, and I came here because of strength. I mean, it gave me 20 strength. All right, and mana gain on hit. It's, it's pretty useful. I think it, it eases up the mana sustain. Although when you have Warlock's Mark going, uh, you don't really need this anymore. So just get multiply in here. And that's a tree. It's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's, it's what almost every crit caster tends to get. The other route to do, uh, if you are really staff or strength, right, is, is actually to path through here because we've got stuff, we've got strength here, tons of strength, uh, there's strength along here as well, there's life nodes, and you can come up here, they go life, regen, strength, more strength, strength here, and when you touch this place, while dropping nodes in, I would say, this, this area, you might still want to keep because that, that is, after all, seven, like, uh, it's nine points, right? Not doing much. Uh, you can still keep acrobatics and you suddenly want to multiply here. Right? But if you just drop this cluster altogether in favor of strength, you can just puff through here, or maybe even come down here, right? Get some strength. Uh, and go back up, come here, get get some jewel slots, get life here, and just just plow your way through this part, which is uh, a lot of strength in this area. So that would be I, I imagine the very poor man's way where you kind of afford strength on gear. Uh, you just want a functional mapping build, come through here instead. All right, now quality of life, uh, which is the last part of this build. Mm, uh, of course, the six link is quality of life. Uh, Choir of the Storm is quality of life. And uh, let's see, uh, no, no, no. Fort. Ah, this is prime quality of life. Uh, look at that. With the new corrupts, uh, we have 15% chance to fortify a me melee hit. And you might notice that our current setup doesn't have fortify. So uh, if you can afford this, it's probably going to get one exalt. I got this for 50 chaos per dude. It's going to give my shield charge and my um, figure strike a chance to fortify, effectively freeing out a slot for uh, faster attacks, calling strike, any of those things. And it increases the survivability by 20%. Ish. 
So definitely luxury. There's also endurance charge on stun, which you'll be doing all the time since you one-shot packs. Uh, but that falls off at the boss. There's also uh this one has attack speed. AoE doesn't do much aside from my hero vice. Uh, but the attack speed is nice as well. Mm. I think that's about it. Uh, you do not want anything that increases physical damage. In fact, the worst rolls you get on Mjolnir, and don't quality it. The worst rolls you get, the better, because if you hit harder with the weapon, you're going to hurt yourself more through the bleed. So don't do that. Okay, now. And that's it for the build, really. Uh, um, oh, special note. Uh, there is one encounter that, that basically fucks Fika Strike over, and that's the Temple Boss. So uh, here's some footage. Basically, during the Temple Boss, you can't be under the guy, and that is a problem for melee builds, and Flicker Strike in particular, because Flicker Strike teleports you to the base of your target automatically. And so the longer you are under the Temple Boss, the faster they're going to crash and burn. And I found out, uh, found out I couldn't damage him at all with Flicker Strike. And so, uh, in the early days, I was using Spectral Troll to just throw the Mjolnir at him, right? For wise. And uh, get my lightning procs off. Later on, I found out that Frost Blades uh, is a really good solution because it gives you some range. And more than that, it actually reduces the bleed damage you take because it converts to cold damage. Uh, and it actually allows you to hit many, the, all the stupid minions in, in the... In the and when he's summoning them as well, which actually allows you to either leech back up faster or simply get them down faster. Yeah. So <laughs> that's it. That's all. So it's the same for Link. And you just kind of like, poof, poof. Yep. Bonus points uh, for MTX. You really want to have uh, the Conquest weapon or the Harpy weapon. Right. Okay. It, I swear, it increases your deeds. And, and when you wear this like sick armor and the battery bag attachment and the lightning skull and, and like you have this cape look, look at that combine all that mtx with the with the tailwind trail and you do more damage it's it's proven just run it path for building and key in your mtx and it will show you you do about one percent more damage with this build and that's all for my guy uh i hope i've made it more visual this time i ended up talking a lot but if you have any questions on the build, please PM me. Uh, do remember the disclaimer that it does not do well past T14 maps because ultimately it is an unhit build that's kept by a cooldown. And uh, there are ways around it, but it's going to cost you a bunch. I might perfect this build and upload another video showing that one. Uh, but just the na nature of Flick Strike alone is that it isn't great for bosses because it makes you lose control of the character, right? You teleport around the guy, sure. But uh, you sort of are unable to, to predict where you'll be. You can't get behind bosses reliably. Uh, you jump into fires. You, you get locked in multi-strike. Uh, more than that, uh, it also depends very heavily on Veil RF and Veil Arc bonuses to provide a quick burst of damage. Right? And once you hit T15, first of all, bosses are a little bit tankier. But worst of all, they are phased. And phased bosses, as you know, uh, don't do well with fail skills because you blow all your charges getting them down in the first phase and then after that you kind of just have to flicker around waiting for stuff to happen. So I would not recommend that. Maybe if you had a 6 link and you ran Custom Critical Strike Arc and you might see more damage, I will maybe demonstrate that. I did it for a while because I 6 link my uh, impulses by, by accident. Uh, but no, no, no. Um, stay away from those. Uh, by the time you get the T14, uh, it's time to take the build further or just play something else which is more practical. It's less fun but and less flashy, but ultimately still practical. AKA projector builds, trapper builds, anything doesn't doesn't involve you uh Oh, you could go poet's pen and I'll release a video on that as well. That that build, it's essentially the same setup. Uh it allowed me to face tank Shaper and Uber Elder, as in uh, I would stand in the beam and not die. And so if you guys want to see that build with Poets Pens and the same premise, did I? Uh, yeah, go ahead and, and drop me a comment and I'll release that as well. Otherwise, uh, peace out guys and thanks for watching. Leave your comments and I'll keep trying to make better and better guides.